We witnessed at Anfield yesterday. Uh, no goals at the end of the day. It was Liverpool nil, Manchester United nil. Not the goal fest that many were predicting. Not the uh, comfortable win for Liverpool that many predicted. Graham Souness, former captain, of course, won the European Cup, the Champions League nowadays, with uh, Liverpool no fewer than three times. Did the result tell us more about Manchester United's character or more about Liverpool's title shortcomings? It told us more about United's character, says Graham. Post-match, Van Dijk spoke. This was him on Sky Sports. If you see um, how we play the game, how we have in most of the ball and creating some opportunities, I think um, there was only one team I think that were trying to win the game, and unfortunately it didn't happen. But uh, yeah, so that's why it's frustrating because you know we want to win every game, of course, but especially if you play against a team like them. And yeah, in the end, you know they are buzzing with a point, and we are very disappointed with a point. So Roy Keane straight after that game called. Those comments, arrogant from Van Dijk, um, and then cited the fact that Liverpool had only w- won the, the the Premier League uh, once in thirty years, and what was he talking about, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, was he right to an extent that Van was Dijk who, was who right? Roy, I think I think Van I think it's understandable. You're frustrated. It's a game you've dominated, a game you expected to win. Sense of frustration could have been a bit more magnanimous in his in his choice of words. But he was right, wasn't he? There was only one team tried to win it. United could have won it, though. Yeah, if there was only one team tried to win it. There was only one team set up the stall before a ball is kicked. In minute in minute one, they tried to win the game. Man United were in survival mode by the way they set out to play. And don't take my word for it. Stats tell you that. Oh, I know. But would but it not have been more... Do you not think... Where I'd be critical of Van Dijk is, Jim... Get used to it. That's this is not a new thing for big teams. It would have been the same for Man United when they they were the dominant force. Teams go to to um, Old Trafford, sit in, and try and nick the game. This is not a new but, thing for but Liverpool. But why was he focusing on Manchester United? Why didn't Van just Dijk focus on his own size deficiencies? But, but I think he touches in that on, they couldn't get he, the ball over the net. He touches on that in, 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 in his, his interview as well. He mentions that maybe we should look at ourselves. That's what he said, and and the initial words. Although he could have been maybe a wee bit gentler in his choice of words, I think are correct. There was only one team that tried to win the game, and and this is born out of frustration. You know, as a as a as a player, as a manager, you're thrown in front of a camera minutes after the final whistle. Emotions are still high. They you play in a game of football, you get a feel for a game of football. For Van Dyke standing as a spectator for the vast majority of that game, looking at his team, you know, playing in their last third. Sorry, yeah, their last, the last third, pummeling away, having no joy, being frustrated. I was surprised that I thought the crowd got a wee bit frustrated yesterday at Anfield, which is, which I, I can honestly say I never witnessed in my time as a manager or a player, not not at that extent. And I think that was born out of frustration by the crowd because of who they were playing, because mm. it was Man United. They get frustrated by that because listen, they turned up last year, and they win seven nil. It was, was it a lucky 7-0? I can't say it was a lucky 7-0, but totally unexpected. So, of course, we're going to win again this week, they're thinking to themselves. Didn't happen. Deal with it. It's not a new thing. Team's going to Anfield, sitting in and trying to nick the game. And Man United have done that, had that experience when they were the top team, of teams going to Old Trafford, sitting and trying to win the game. And when it doesn't happen, I'll bet you wouldn't have to look too long and too hard to find a Man United player saying the exact same thing Going back in the last 15, 20 years. No, not that. Yeah, 15, 20 years. Certainly not the last 10 years. But they're not, in spite of what you said earlier, you'd have to be a village idiot to to uh, to criticise Liverpool here. They're not beyond criticism here. Simon's got a point, has he not? I need you to tell me, what, what, where where is the criticism? Where directly is the criticism? They didn't agree. do the most important. I bit. think Liverpool are the most ent- entertaining side. They're not. They're no. They're not the side they were two or three years ago. They're not the same side, but they're still. The, for me, they're they're, they're they're the most exciting side to watch. I enjoy watching Liverpool more than I enjoy watching Man City. But go, I don't think Virgil Van Dijk's observations are are are. are, are arrogant. I think Roy Keane has turned him into something more because Roy Keane is probably sitting in the studio being irritated within an inch of his life by Daniel Sturridge during the course of the broadcast, <laughs> um, which most reasonable people probably would be. Um, and I think Keane is a bit back because he's a United person, yeah. he's a United fan, he's watching Liverpool 
and their position in the, in the world against Man United's position in the world, and he's given it back. It's born at a Roy's frustration yeah. as well, watching no, that. But I don't think it's arrogant. I think it's probably Graham is right. It's a statement of fact. United came not to lose this game. There is a difference between not to lose a game and to win a game. Liverpool came to win a game. I think that's a fair observation, and I don't really think there's anything arrogant about it. I think See, that's I, a mischaracterisation. I think Roy, Roy was... I think we're talking like this because Roy got quite <laughs> emotional about it. I mean, what 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 really are they they talking about? Yeah, we tried to win the game. Only one team tried to win the game. Stats would bear that out, um, and we're frustrated because we haven't won the game. Van Dijk maybe should have been a little bit more magnanimous. I accept that, but the reality is he's told the truth. There was only one team trying to win the game. Why does he have to be? Why does he have to be magnanimous? Who who defines well, you, who 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 is the, who is every... the adjudicator of what magnanimity is? Well, what, Roy Keane. Give me a break. Yeah. No, but that's the way it is today, isn't it? They're all media trained, these boys today. Well, it's, you know, what you've got was a nice answer from a football mm. player that's been in a game where they think they've dominated it. I think they've been profligate and I think that it was upon them to, to score goals, but notwithstanding it, they're the dominant side. His last question gives an answer and Keane turns it into a pantomime about arrogance because he's irritated with how crap Man United are. But that's about the bottom line. You've got to I, spot I think it was probably... Yeah, I think Roy got a bit prickly though, Simon, because he was seeing Van Dijk saying... <laughs> You know, they came here today, the way they play, we should have won that week. But they didn't. No. They but, didn't. But, but, that's but, a, that's but, a fact. I mean, he should, Van Dijk should be, should be saying, our guys up front need to take a look at themselves. He's probably bristling at the consequences of Man United's performance because it's a, dis, it's, a, it's a disenfranchising period when you're watching a side that once dominated football that you were synonymous with mm. in the domination mm. and you're watching a side that's a poor version of itself and you cannot find a solution in your own thinking as to why United are structurally, logistically, spiritually, in every other way, a, a poor imitation of what they once were. As Graham says, they've spent more than a billion quid in 10 years, they've spent 1.7 billion quid and yet they have nothing of a side that resembles ev anything that once was. And that, that and it's, again, it's like the old Monty Python sketch, isn't it? That power is now dead. This is an ex-power. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. This is an ex-Man United <laughs> side. Can you see any positives, Graham? I, I, I'm asking for this. Uh, in, in Manchester United right now, where are the positives? What are the positives? Coming out of a performance like that yesterday, do you see any performances and oh. what they showed us at Anfield? So a price on the ticket. If, if you play for a big football club, Man United are a big football club by anyone's standards. You're constantly under the spotlight. Some, and then individually as a player, some people need a lot of praise and to be confident to, to get to get the best out of you or for them to play to their best. Right now, Man United are a team not playing with a great deal of confidence, constantly under the spotlight, constantly getting criticised. And it's, you know, you, you really have to stand up and be counted at this time. The, the big players in that dressing room, if there is any, have to stand up and carry the lesser lights with them. And there's not, there's not any great signs of that. So what they get from yesterday is, I, I said in my column, Daily Mail on a Saturday. I said, if, if you know, I can't see Man United win. It's only one win. But if Man United were to win, there is no better game for them to get a confidence booster than going to Anfield and win, or mm. winning. Mm. That didn't happen. But they got a draw, and they will take some confidence from that. So going forward, yeah, they'll be better. But uh, Man United cannot play like that every week. They can't go and play. With all due respect to the, the teams nearer the bottom, they can't go and try and nick games against Burnley or or whoever else is down there. The, le the lesser teams. It's Man United we're talking about. They they have to play a brand of football which is 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 in their DNA. They you know you go back to days of George Best. They were front foot football and the great entertainers, the glamorous. Yeah. In Germany, they called Bayern Munich FC Hollywood. That's what if you play for Man United. That's what Man United, they, they get more headlines, more interest in them than any other football club. They are the team that you would say in our league is FC Hollywood. And okay. deal with it. If you're a player there, you have to deal with it. They're a long way off that, for sure. Manchester United fans listening this morning, I would have thought you're somewhat celebrating a, a, a point because a uh, few of you must have thought uh, your side would go there yesterday to Liverpool and come away with anything. Am I right? You can tell us. 03717 double two double three double four. If you are happy about that result, what does that tell you about where Manchester United, your team is right now? 03717 Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.